You're not alone, and if the means don't get you, maybe some stats will. 43% of employees, according to this Deloitte survey, uh, reported being exhausted always or often. What makes it so difficult to talk about burnout? You can yell it out. We're, we're, we're all friends and family now. We clap for each other. We're feeling good. What makes it so difficult to talk to someone about being burnt out? It's vulnerable. It's vulnerable. I love that. Yes? Vulnerable. Yeah, vulnerable. Yes? Afraid of losing your job. Afraid of losing your job. That's a big one. Dignity. Dignity. We're not supposed to be, We're not supposed to be burnt, out. burnt out. Okay. <laughs> Say it again. The response that you get, right? A lot of times people don't ask for help because they feel like they're going to be alone. Like no one else is doing it. Because as you look at other people, they're just trucking along. They're doing just fine. And they don't want to ask for help. And we start to struggle with this thing so much when we really should raise our hand and say, you know what, I need help. It's not a weakness to ask for help. It's actually a tremendous strength to be able to say, you know what, I need help. Um, I, I have this love for, uh, if you can't tell by the cut of the sweater, uh, Italian food and, and pasta and bread. And <laughs> all the carbs you're not supposed to have is just... I don't know, pray for me with my pasta woes. Um, we were at uh, Maggiano's the other day, and uh, I think they know my name now. They're like, oh, Tony, hey, right over here. We got everything set up. And my youngest daughter, who's 10 years old, says, Dad, I'm ready to order off the adult menu. I'm tired of ordering from the kids' menu. And I'm like, okay. And so she orders an appetizer. She orders a dessert before her entree. Like she just went all in and we let her have it. And when she got her entree, she had eaten so much of her appetizer that she couldn't handle the entree. She was already to her limit. And so she asked for a to-go box. And I'm watching her struggle because she has the adult plate, which is like this big. But to her, this bowl of pasta is this big. And she's trying to hold it with this arm and scrape it in with this arm. And I said, I wonder when she's going to ask for help. And that's us a lot of times. We're trying to juggle all these things, and we got emails, and we got soccer games, and we got track practice, and we got all these things that we're trying to juggle, and we look just as crazy as my daughter trying to juggle this pasta. And I was like, do you need help? She's like, yes, please help me. <laughs> right? Don't get to the point of your stress level being at a 10 out of 10 or a 12 out of 10. You can get there, too, uh, before you say, you know what? I need help. So the first thing that I want you to think about is make sure that you're asking for help. Make sure that you're raising your hand and knowing that asking for help does not make you weak. It's actually a tremendous strength to have that self-awareness like uh, Chris talked about. I also want to encourage you that you're not alone. <laughs> there are people all over being stressed out. Everyone from the greatest of all time all the way down to Michael Jordan. <laughs> Sorry, you can't be the GOAT if you quit on your team twice. I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> he broke my heart with the Pacers so many times, I could just never give him credit. Never give him credit. Um, you're not alone, and if the means don't get you, maybe some stats will. 43% of employees, according to this Deloitte survey, uh, reported being exhausted always or often. That's a lot of people, 43%. 42% reported being stressed, 35% overwhelmed, and 23% depressed. I'm sure you're somewhere in one of those numbers. If everyone shakes their head at the same time, no one will know where you are. Right? Here's some more numbers for you. A lot of us get afraid. I, I think uh, it was Rebecca here that said uh, we're not supposed to be burnt out, right? So we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to have those conversations. Let me let you in on something. There's a great chance that the leader that you're afraid to talk to is experiencing burnout as well. Take a look at these numbers. The little green circles are the uh, team members. The, the blue circles are C-suite executives. Look how close those numbers are. If we were to have a stress off, I think we'd be tired. <laughs> so I want you to know that you're not alone, OK? That's really, really important for you to understand that you're not alone. You're stressing over having this conversation. Understand that the person that you're having the conversation with, there's a great chance that they're feeling the same way.